morning. Good morning and welcome to Rockville Presbyterian Church as we get to gather together to be a people gathered by God. We get to acknowledge the very presence of God, the Holy Spirit of Christ moving among us. Today is Trinity Sunday. We take time today to, to honor, to acknowledge, and to live into the great theological gift that is the Trinity. With that on our hearts and our mind as we prepare for worship, let us gather together and praise God. Please join with me in the call to worship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, glory to you forever. Giver, gift, and giving, glory to you forever. Lover, beloved, and love itself, glory to you forever. Rainbow of promise, Ark of salvation, dove of peace, glory to you forever. God who was, God who is, God who is to come, glory to you forever. Let us join together in singing the gathering hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, number one in your hymnal. Let us pray, O oh, blessed Trinity, in whom we know the maker of all things, seen and unseen, the savior of all, both near and far. By your spirit, enable us to worship your divine majesty, so that with all company of heaven, we may magnify your glorious name, saying, holy, 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 Glory to you, O Lord Most High. Amen. 
Now let us come to confession. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Trusting in God's grace, let us together confess our sins. Participate with me in the prayer of confession. God of grace, love, and communion, we confess that we have failed to love you with our heart, soul, and mind, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. We ignore your commandments, stray from your way, and follow other gods. Have mercy on us, dear Lord. Forgive our sins and raise us to new life and give glory that we may serve you faithfully and give glory to your holy name. Hear the good news, for God did not send the Son to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. So I want to take some time to speak directly to the children today. And I, I, I have a prop here right in front of me. So we're going to use the microphone stand. I want to kind of show this to you. So today is Trinity Sunday. And one of the things that we're talking about is, is kind of threes and how important threes are. So um, I, this is one of these things I wish that I had you here so that I could talk to you directly. Um, but what we're going to do is, is if we kind of take this, and I tried, if there was just one point, and I tried to set this down, it wouldn't stand up very well unless I was really, really good at balancing. So one point isn't very stable. I could take two points like this. I could try to balance it, and it would fall over pretty much all the time, unless, again, I was really good at balancing, which would be a little tricky, particularly given the angle this is on. But once you add the third leg, all of a sudden, it becomes really, really stable. There is something about there being three. If you have a table, you need at least three legs. Now, admittedly, four works too. But in this case, it's really the three that's the first. You can't have a leg with just two tables, with two legs, I mean. You can't have a table with just one leg. You need the three. And so I bring that up this morning because there's something about the number three. And the folks that came before us, the theologians that lived uh, thousands, a couple thousand years ago um, in the, the 500 ADs, they had this big conversation because Jesus talks about the Father and the Holy Ghost, and then there's Jesus. And what's the deal with all that? Is there three gods? Is there one God? Uh, are they the same? Are they different? And there's all these big debates that happen. But the bottom line is what they figured out is that when we imagine, we think about God, Instead of thinking about God as kind of one thing or two things, we can think about God as kind of being in the world in three ways. As Father, the Creator, as Christ, the Holy Ghost, or as Christ, the Savior, the Son, and then the Holy Ghost, which kind of continues out in the world. And so getting into the specifics is a little tricky. <laughs> but we have these three ways that we can think about God. 
Now that doesn't mean with this mic stand, this is still the mic stand, this is still the mic stand, and this is still the mic stand. So it's not so much a matter of that there's three gods, there's still one God, but we can think about God in three ways. And when we think about God in three ways, God becomes much more, um, becomes more powerful, becomes more a part of our lives. And we can think of all the different places where we have three and how three is stronger than one or two. Now, one of the big things that I always think about is think about if you're talking with a friend and there's just two of you and you're kind of going back and forth and you're having an argument. If you add a third person into that, sometimes they help keep it from being an argument. They keep the conversation flowing. And it's the same way. When we think about God in three ways, we don't see this kind of, we don't see God as, as one powerful person or as two people that are fighting with each other. Instead, we think of God in three ways where God can kind of flow in the same way that it's, it can be very different to have a conversation with three people than two people. It usually means that you can have a more interesting conversation. Things move a little bit better. Um, these are things to think about when we think about the Trinity and we think about God, that, that, that us being able to think of God in three ways and the three ways that God comes into the world helps us better interact with God, understand God, and, and a lot of that sort of thing. So that's kind of what we talk about today. And I know that's not the easiest stuff to talk about. That's actually really hard even for theologians who study this stuff. And it wasn't an easy topic to discuss but that's essentially what it is. We can, it's still one God, but we understand God in three different ways, and it helps us have a better understanding of the way God is in the world. And so that's what we talk about when we talk about the Trinity. It's all one God, but it's three ways that God exists. And you can't have a stable God without those three ways of being in the world. So we can think about it that way. That's one way to think about it. But essentially, even though this is a little confusing, the thing to remember is that having these three kind of expressions of God, these three different ways that God is in the world, is it's just ways, more ways for God to love us and more ways for us to love God. Because when we come here and, and we say that we're Christians and that we follow Jesus, we commit to being loving people. And we can experience more love and give more love when we think of God in this way and we understand God in this way. So that's the important thing to remember. So that, I want to make sure that you know that, that we're getting close to having folks back in the sanctuary. I know we're excited about the end of the school year is coming up close. Some folks are graduating. Um, you know, we want to keep praying for you as, as you work on being in school. This has been a tough year, and, and we want you to keep working hard. We know that you have been working hard, and know that this whole congregation is here with you and loves you and is, is holding you in their prayers. So continue to be uh, the loving people, the loving people that you are called to be. We love you, and we're glad that you are part of this congregation. The first reading today can be found in Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance upon him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they flew. One called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook 
at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth. He touched my mouth with it and said, Now this has touched your lips. Your guilt has departed. Your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from Paul's letter to the Romans. Chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we, we come into your great divine and holy mystery. We come into this mystery with questions. We come seeking rational answers. But we receive from you a love that is beyond explanation. That is beyond simple, rational answers. Help us to move to a place where we can trust that love while living into the fullness of the divine mystery that exists within you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you this day. So this idea of the Trinity and Trinity Sunday, what's really interesting about Trinity Sunday is, is it's not so much that this Sunday is about celebrating a person, but it's celebrating a theological idea. Um, and I could get into some of the, the theological uh, uh, acrobatics, heavy lifting that happens around the formation of the theology of the Trinity, which again happens um, around 400 uh, A.D., 400, 500 A.D. Um, but instead, I, I, I kind of want to dwell in this space where instead of trying to figure it out in this rational, theological, logical kind of sense, that we, we immerse ourselves in this idea of, of the power of three. I kind of alluded to some of this in the children's sermon, but I want... I want you to think of a time where you've been in a conversation. It's been you and one other person. 
maybe you're having a little bit of an argument. And there's just this tension that exists, this kind of power struggle. Now, this doesn't happen all the time. You know, there's plenty of opportunities where we've had one-on-one -on -one conversations where it have been really, really rich. But sometimes you just get that where there's that, that kind of that back and forth between two ideas. Now imagine a third person coming into that and offering a different way of seeing. It no longer becomes about the two competing ideas, but it suddenly becomes about three ideas or two ideas and a, a way of combining those two ideas that almost create a third idea. It changes going from two to three. It's a different conversation. There's a newness, there's a creation that comes out of having that third. And it's no longer so much about one side trying to win over the other side, which again doesn't happen in every one-on-one -on -one conversation, but it happens. When you add that third person, all of a sudden it becomes about a flow. Not too long ago, I went to go visit a friend's house, uh, and, and this particular friend of mine, we've been friends for a long time, since, uh, since the early 90s. Um, and, uh, and we were kind of having a hard time. We were going back and forth on an issue, much like I'm describing. And we had a third friend that was there with us, and he just was able to say something that was just along the lines of diffusing all the tension in the room. And I'm sure you've had moments like that where a third person just changes the dynamic, all of a sudden you can see things differently. It's almost as if there's this creative action that comes into the room. There's another big moment when going from two to three is a huge change, and that's, that's in a family where a, a couple has a child and for anybody that, that's ever been in that situation, you know that all of a sudden the love goes from being this kind of dual love that goes back and forth to this more expansive love that now engages the three. And somehow, if you've been in that situation, you know what it's like to hold that small infant. You know that somehow the love has been multiplied in ways that you didn't know were possible. It's a new dynamic, going from two to three. There's this power in the idea of three. This idea of father, mother, and child. We see it in other places. We can think of it, in, in, in fact, it's kind of fun to think about all the trinities that we see in our life. We see Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And we can go through and we can name it in different ways as we did in our call to worship. Creator, Son, Holy Ghost. Creator, Christ, Holy Spirit. We can say giver, given, and giving. We can say lover, loved, and love itself. We can name it in all these ways. Then we can see out into a broader world where there's other places where we see these trinities. If you're a gardener, you know that it takes sun, soil, and water. For humans to survive, we need few food, oxygen, and water. We can look at our relationship with with God as the divine humanity and then the whole of creation and the relationship that flows between those. We can think of the way Paul talked about it as having the Father, the Holy Spirit, and then us as children of God. We can think of, of self and then our house or our family and then the larger community and the way we relate in those ways. There's something about three. I 
I'd go as far as to say there's, there's a unity, a unique kind of unity that emerges from threes. Things aren't opposed to one another. There's a flow that can happen when there's three. There's a flow that happens. It's not a power struggle. Instead, it's a creative energy. And again, we can start to see this all over the place. I think of the church, God, and our community. We can think of, of, of all sorts of places where we see three. This, this notion of the Trinity, this theological debate that happened in the early church, and it was a heck of a debate. If you've ever heard the saying, one iota is different, there was actually so much debate around the Trinity and, of, and whether God and Christ were the same and they couldn't figure it out, and, and this went on and on and on. I ended up writing a paper about this in seminary so I could talk about this for far too long. But one of the big issues was whether God and Jesus were the same or similar, and the words in Greek for same and similar had, had just one letter difference between them. And folks were ready to kill each other and totally tear apart the church over one iota, the equivalent of the I in Greek. This was a massive, massive struggle theologically. And we can take the time and try to figure out exactly what it means to be the Trinity, or we can live into that poetic reality that comes with three, just as Isaiah did. Holy, holy, holy. We can live into the creativity, the energy, the flow, the unity that comes when things are in three. The stability, as we can see in our mic stand, or any tripod. And that's kind of what I love about Trinity Sunday. It's one of the things that I love about Christianity because it's one of those things when you get into conversations uh, between world religions and what each religion has to offer to that bigger conversation, Christianity and this idea of the Trinity is fairly unique. The idea of God represented in three ways. I just want to close with this, that after 400 years of, of of almost fisticuff arguing over the Holy Spirit and the Trinity and, and Christ and God and what the relationship between all of them is, even though it doesn't seem, if we look back, particularly at Paul, one of the most important theologians within Christianity, that he was all that worried about defining the Trinity. The Trinity was finally solved when Gregor of Nazianza said, the Trinity is like a dance. If God is the dance and you have three dancers, the three dancers flow together. The three dancers are the dance. This huge problem that existed was solved with poetry. It was solved with the understanding and image of God that moves within us in our hearts and our souls and our bodies doesn't say traps within the inner workings of our mind. That we have a God that is represented in a way that we can see in so many places when we imagine all the trinities, the holy trinities that exist in our lives. So as we think about this, as we think of this doctrine of the trinity, as we think of the challenges of what it means to be 
Christian, what it means to express our faith, let us remember that one of the most challenging conversations to ever happen in the church was answered with the poetic understanding of three dancers and that them together created the dance. That God is a dance and that we are called to participate. What good news, what great news we do receive. Our unity hymn today, as we reflect, as we reflect on the word, we hear the the very words uh, of of Isaiah, of Isaiah, who also acknowledged that 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 power of three by reciting "Holy, Holy, Holy," something we see throughout the Old Testament. But it echoes here his words in our unity hymn. I, the Lord of sea and sky, or also known as Here I Am, Lord, hymn number 69.
As we prepare to join our voices together, we acknowledge many trinities with this confession of our faith. We acknowledge those who have come before us, those who are with us now, and those who are yet to come, a mighty trinity of past, present, and future. We also, in this creed, acknowledge the unity that was created around the doctrine of the Trinity and the Father, the Spirit, and the Holy Ghost. As we recite these words, let us be united with that creative, poetic energy that transcends any attempts to put constraints on God and move into the space of letting God flow within us in ways beyond our imagination. For that, let us together confess our faith, together saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. And as we continue to acknowledge that great mystery of being embraced and in the love of God, we acknowledge that our call is to be God's light and love in the world, and that we create this space to nurture that love among us, to nurture the courage and the strength that is required to be in the world, to be God's love, to be present, to be in service, to create this space where we can be restored and be renewed. We do need tithes and offerings, but that is not all that we acknowledge in this time. We acknowledge all the ways that we give, not only to manifest this community of faith, to also acknowledge all the ways that we give into God's creation. So as we listen to the offertory from Howie today, think of what it is that you commit to this community of faith so it can be God's love in the world. Let us pray. Gracious Father, giver of all good things for our home on earth and for your unfailing mercy, we give you thanks. Christ, our Redeemer, for your sacrifice on the cross, 
and raising from death that we might live, we give you thanks and praise. Holy Spirit, giver of life, for your abiding presence in our lives and for comforting and guiding us, we give you thanks, praise, and glory. O triune God, to you be glory and praise, now and forever. Amen. As a community of faith, as a beacon of God's love in the world, we take time to lift up prayers for our community, prayers for each other, prayers that are upon our hearts, prayers for the world. And as we do each week, since we're not yet gathering in the sanctuary, but we will be gathering soon, we take time to, during the prayer, to have a moment where, where we allow those prayers to be uh, put upon the lips uh, of all of you, wherever you are. And I encourage you to do this as we take those moments of silence, lift up your hearts, lift up those prayers, vocalize those prayers. Now, we may not be able to hear each other across time and space, but one thing that we can do is trust that God will give us through the spirit, the courage, the heart, the knowledge, the love to be there for one another. So with this upon our hearts, let us pray. Gracious God, we come into your great mystery, your great trinity, your expression of love and creative creativity. The way in which you flow into one another. And the way we can see that working in our own lives in so many different ways. Help us to live into the power and the strength that comes from being immersed in your great trinity. And help us find all the ways that that trinity is reflected in the world. For one of the things that Christ calls us to do in repentance is to see the world differently when we see the Trinity, we see you reflected in it, and we, in fact, do see that world different. Recognizing that our call is to be your love in the world, we take this time of prayer to strengthen one another, to acknowledge that by speaking aloud these prayers, we know that you are present and listening and in our lives and active in our lives. Give us the courage to be your people. And wherever we are, we take that moment of silence where our voices may break the silence with the prayers that come from our deepest hearts. Help us lift those words into this space, trusting that your great love will unite us across time and space. Let's now take the time to lift up those prayers. Gracious God, we also take time on this weekend, this Memorial Day weekend, as a nation to honor those that have sacrificed 
themselves so that we may be in this space together. All of us know someone who has served and passed and we are thankful for that and we honor their memory in this time. At our gatherings tomorrow, let us hold each one of those in our hearts, all who have given, so that we can be this nation, this people. And across the world, we pray that your healing hand of mercy may find ways so that no one else has to risk their lives for the sake of family, nation, cause. That those they may see each other as other may in your grace and love understand their unity. To see not opposing sides but something greater, a trinity where you are involved, where you unite, where you offer creative solutions in ways unimaginable. As we rest into these prayers, as we rest into you, as we build our trust in you and being in relationship with you, we take time to pray in the way that Christ taught us to pray, together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now it's the time to review opportunities for service and acknowledge blessings that our congregation has had. First of all, we can greet and meet on Zoom today. The link is in the email sent to you. Please join everyone who comes and shares fellowship and renews together the good news each has to share. We're especially blessed with our young adults and children who've gone on in their education, scholar Serini has graduated from Emory. Kayla Rose Blake has uh, graduated from Damascus High School, is on to Mount St. Mary's. Mark Maycomer has graduated from Rockville High School this year. Our children, Anna Dawson, is moving on to Barnsley Elementary School. Alicia Yu has been promoted from fifth grade to the Julius West Middle School this year. Kay Hutchins is promoted from fifth grade and is going on to middle school in Wisconsin. And I have to ask Amy Maycomers my forgiveness. I haven't really given her news of the Bauer Bunch. Sophie Bricker is going on to Marymount University. Gabe Brewster leaves for California and the university at um, Southern San Antonio, uh, <coughs> South. Jack Brewster has just graduated from the University of Mary Washington, and Josie Bauer graduated from Good Counsel and is on the way to the Naval Academy. Now we have times again to think about our ability to uh, help and serve. Uh, I want to remind you about getting your sensibility uh, contributions ready to be part of the Presbyterian Hunger uh, program. We're going to collect coins when we can worship together here in the sanctuary. 
We also want to remind you to remember our friends at home. Laura Beers, Vicki Gone, Bowen, Keith Cornelius, Martin Heilman, Jeanette, Jeanette Hoffmaster, Maxine Morgan, Bill Lamfair, Beth McDonald, Phyllis Morrow, and Nancy Weber. These are beloved members who will rejoice and be glad to hear from any one of you. Please take the time to do that. And of course, our community outreach is going great guns. They are still looking for um, uh, volunteers, yes, to work. They have a list on Amazon of things that are needed. Please take a look and buy and help them with these items. They also want to remind you that they do COVID testing. Uh, they are sponsoring COVID testing on Saturdays from 10 to 2 at Rockville United Church and every first and third Sunday at Rockville United Church. So these are th activities that will definitely benefit the community and push COVID away even further. There's a whole list of wonderful things for you to review and consider how you can be Christ's hands and feet in the community. It's the way the church works. Be sure that you're part of it. And just a real quick uh, update from the, the opportunities of service and fellowship. A lot of times we include folks that are in need of prayer. Um, Beth McDonald Lanfair um, is in need of our prayer. She fell uh, this week. Um, she is, from what I understand, returning back home, um, but we need to hold her and the family in prayer at this time. Uh, so, so we hold them uh, in prayer today. Um, as we prepare to go into the world, as we prepare to be those hands and feet of Christ, as, as we think of how we can be involved in our community, we go into the world in joy and we go to the world singing. And our sending hymn today is hymn number 749, Come Live in the Light.
So as you go into the world this week, look, look for the places where the Trinity exists. Those are expressions of God's love, of God's creativity, of God's ability to transcend what we may imagine is possible. So may the steadfast love of the Lord be yours this day and forever. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Do not be afraid. Go, tell this good news to all. Thanks be to God. Amen.